I am so excited about this video because this is in my top five ways of making money from home. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to trade stock options for beginners, even if you don't know one thing about options trading. And don't worry, it's not gonna be for me. Today, I'm interviewing Kuda Biza, who is a professional day trader, completely taking over the options game. So we met in a high ticket mentorship program that I was in and we stay connected and his story is amazing. He's from Zimbabwe and came to America with only $40 in his pocket on a college scholarship. And he has since soared in business. His strategy when dealing with the options is like nothing I've ever seen before. And he can explain it better than anyone. Listen to this. He teaches a 75 year old woman in his program and she's now making hundreds of dollars every single day. Now I'm not going to act like our seniors can't learn anything new, but I am going to say, if grandma can learn how to do this, so can you. Now there may be moments in this video where you were talking about something like call options or put options and it's not gonna be familiar to you, but I'm telling you, just stick around, stay in tune with the video because later on it's gonna say, oh, okay, now that makes sense. So you have to stay until the end of the video just to make sure that you completely understand what we're talking about. And he's gonna give us some examples of how he made money like this. It means that I made $1,200 in three minutes. You can even see the time here, 1228. I closed it out at 1225. Three minutes later, I took the screenshot. So I made $1,200 in three minutes. Now, isn't that something worth learning how to do? Kuda makes well over $1,000 a day in options trading. So I brought him on to teach us newbies how it's done. So let's get right into how options trading works for beginners. Let's go. One of the things that I hear all the time is about like stocks. I know about stocks a little bit anyway, but I also hear about options. And one thing I know that I've always heard that I'm just not gonna touch options because it's just too risky and you don't wanna deal with that. So can you just kind of give us an example of what are, what's the difference between stocks and options? So before I answer the difference between stocks and options, like getting into any trade has an element of risk, but, 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 but I define risk as running into situations knowledgeless. So if you start trading and you don't have any insight as to what you're looking for, especially if you're trading options, that's when you get into really big trouble because options are very volatile. You can lose a lot of money very quickly, but if you know what you're doing, right, you're going into it with knowledge, you can make a lot of money in a very short period of time. Now, back to your initial question, what is the difference between a stock and an option? So let's start with stocks. Stock basically is uh, an ownership uh, within a company. So if you buy one share of Tesla, essentially Whitney, you are now an owner of Tesla, the company, right? With your one share. Now, the cool thing about shares is that they don't expire, right? And you're going to see the difference with options in a minute. Um, so as long as the company is liquid, as long as the company is in business, essentially, and you have one share or however many shares you have of the company, you own the company. What it also means is that if a company is giving out a dividend, you also get to participate in the dividend. Uh, and also more importantly, you know, you can vote, right? Depending on how many shares you have, or even if it's just one share, you could vote and, you know, your, your vote will be counted. And on the other side of things, let's talk about options. Options, it's, uh, it's simply a contract that gives you the right, but not the obligation to exercise whatever the contract is. So I'm going to, I'm going to kind of like break it down in a minute. There are a couple of elements that go into an options contract. Number one is there's always an expiration date. Remember I said that a stock doesn't expire, right? You own it essentially for perpetuity, as long as the company is, you know, running and it's still publicly traded, right? When you buy an options contract, they always have an expiration date. Usually um, they expire every week. So every Friday, there are different contracts that expire. So depending on the contract you buy, it will then expire on that date. And when you're buying options contract, you also buy a certain strike price. So I'll give you an example. Right now, 
Tesla is trading at $257, right? And if you go into the options chain, you can find different strike prices for Tesla that you can then buy these options contract for. So depending on the strike price you want, you can then purchase that options contract and then, you know, you can hold it for however long you want. But at expiration, you now have a decision to make. If you hold it all the way to expiration, it's either you now exercise your right to buy or sell or you just sell the contract as is. If you exercise your right to buy an options contract, it then now means that you now have to purchase the shares at whatever strike price that is. Now, the other key difference between uh, options and stock is that one options contract controls 100 shares. I want to repeat that again. One options contract controls 100 shares. So if I go in, and I purchase one options contract for Tesla, essentially that contract is controlling 100 shares. If I do decide to exercise my right to, to go through with that contract at that strike price, I'm essentially going to buy 100 shares of Tesla. So back to Tesla example, right now it's trading at 257, 258. If I buy a call options contract, meaning that I'm believing that the price is going to go up, right? So mm -hmm. call options is when you believe with your analysis that the price is going to go up. Put options contract are when you believe that the price is going to go down. So if you buy call options thinking that the price is going to go up, so right now it's at 258 mm -hmm. and you buy at 260, um, that's your strike price. And then a week from now, the price for Tesla is at 265. You can exercise the right to buy the shares at 260 even though the price of tesla is now at 265. are you following with me yes so because you bought the contract to say like hey when i want to exercise this i'm gonna buy tesla at this strike price if the price of tesla is way higher than that you're buying it at your strike price right so right now it's at 258 you buy an options contract at 260 and then when you're ready to exercise it it's now at 265 it means that your contract is in the money mainly because if you exercise that right you purchase the 100 shares at 260 per, par, per per stock but now you can immediately sell it in the marketplace at 265 so you've essentially made five dollars per share by having the options contract right the same is true for puts so for puts um if you believe that the price is going to go down Right now, Tesla is trading at 257, 258 range. You can buy puts at 255, which is lower because you believe that the price is going to go down. Now, when you're ready to exercise your, your options, if now the price is at, you know, <clears throat> to whatever, right? Like if it's a, if it's at a low, if it's at a, if it's at a lower price. So let's say it's now at 250 and your strike price is 255 you're going to sell your options contract at 255 although the market is at 250 so essentially you're benefiting from that strike price that you bought that was favorable to you but the flip side could happen so using that same call option contract example you bought a 260 strike price but the price never actually got to 260 in fact it went down if you now decide to exercise that options contract you now have to buy it at 260, even if the stock is now trading at 200. That's if you decide to go ahead with exercising that obligation. What you could also do is you could just sell the contract at whatever premium value contract is at that point in time, and then you just lose money on the premium because you could buy one options contract, let's say for $100, and then if things don't go your way, maybe it just drops down to 50 bucks. So you only lose $50 as opposed to you then having to spend a lot of money to buy the 100 shares at the highest strike price. So essentially, options, contra options contracts were created as a tool, it's like an insurance policy to help traders, you know, minimize their risk getting into a trade. And then if the trade actually goes their way, they can now uh, make money on the upside. 
But if they, so what is it called an obligation? So when they say, okay, I'm going to use this option and go ahead and get it at this price, then they're locked in, right? Is that how it works? So to articulate, to, 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 to restate what I said earlier, I said, you have the right, but not the obligation. Oh, okay. Right? So you don't have to actually go ahead and you have the option to use that or not, right? That's why they're called options, right? So you have the option to exercise the, the contract or you could just sell the contract in itself. In certain instances, uh, like if it's indices, you can actually let the contract expire if it's worthless and there's no transaction that you do on your end. The only thing is you lose the premium that you paid to acquire the contract. So, if you're trading actual stocks like Tesla, like companies, mm -hmm. ideally you want to get rid of the contracts before expiration, right? Because if, if it's actually triggered for you to exercise this obligation, you now have to own oh. these hundred shares. Okay. So most day traders like me, we're like literally holding these contracts for minutes. Sometimes hours, if you know, if your trade is moving in, 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 in a certain direction, but normally day traders who are trading options, we're never even exercising the right to own the hundred shares. What we're just doing is we're making money on the appreciation of the contract value, right? So, so that's really it. And okay. um, if you take a look at this uh, contract, right? You can see that at open, this was the price. And then at close, there was this appreciation in value. So as an options trader, I would have made money in just the value of the contract. And that's really how we make money trading options. Oh, so that's like the secret sauce of how it all works. Now, how do you exactly. know, like, I'm, I'm assuming, how do you know if a stock is gonna go up or down? This is basically, is this just from news that's going on uh, and the industry that you're hearing that you're getting these cues is like, oh, okay, this just came out. Let me do this. Like, how do you know whether a stock is or an option is going to go up or down? And if I'm not using the correct verbiage, you know, let me know. So you never really know, right? But there are two tools that you can use that will give you the best probability to at least have insight as to how things are going to go. So the two things that you leverage is number one, fundamental analysis, which was kind of like what you were referring to where you were saying news, um, you look into the track record of the company, you know, earnings and things like that. So, you, you know, normally as a trader, what you want to do is you want to do your own fundamental analysis, really understand, you know, what, what is driving this company. Um, you 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 read their earnings reports you you read the news and you just really understand from a fundamental perspective do you think that there's an opportunity for this company to grow or you know this company is most likely not going to grow so i'm going to use nvidia as an example ai right now is booming and nvidia is at the center of it so if you do your fundamental analysis you're going to find that they can't even keep up with demands right um they're getting so many orders that they have so many back orders, they, they're not able to fulfill those orders. So that's always a good position for a company to have where supply is less than demand. So from a fundamental perspective, NVIDIA is sitting in a really good place because, you know, a lot of these customers want what they have and they can't even keep up with the orders. The second thing that you can do is you could do what's called technical analysis. Now, with technical analysis, there are different ways where you can um, do your technical analysis, but it's basically just looking at charts, right? So okay. I'm, I'm going to share my screen real quick uh, to, to just showcase you what I mean by that. So right now we're taking a look at AMD. And you can see I did my technical analysis pre-market and I identified those two zones one that's in red and one that's in in green and basically my analysis had told me that as soon as price action entered that green zone there's a high probability that the price is going to go up based on historical performance because that's what technical analysis really is 
you are basically leveraging, you know, history to then guide you as to what's going to happen in the future. Because traders um, have certain patterns, right? And there are certain price points that are attractive for institutions and retail traders. So, for example, um, if price was to then enter this level, right, a lot of institutions or even retail traders might think, okay, this is a great price for me to acquire AMD. So let me buy. And this is based off the historical information that you can, you can see when you're looking into the charts. So that's why I had marked this zone as kind of like my buy zone, right? And then the, the, the zone over there at the top in the red, historically, when price got into the zone, there was a lot of selling going on. So I knew that as soon as price gets into the zone, there's a high probability that there's going to be a lot of orders to sell the stock because now a lot of the traders have made money from getting it from this green zone to this red zone. So technical analysis is, is another way to do it. And um, that's kind of like my core focus in my program is I really teach people how to become really good at technical analysis because if you're really good at technical analysis i can give you any stock and without maybe even performing the fundamental analysis and just focusing on the charts you have a higher probability of um understanding what will most likely happen when price action enters certain ranges so so those are the two real um fun uh, those are the two main ways that people are somewhat able to uh, predict what will most likely happen depending on where the price is at. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Now, what platform are you using when you are uh, with your stocks or options? So the platform I was just sharing where I was uh, showing my charts is called TradingView. So I just use TradingView to do my charting. When I when I'm ready to now actually execute a trade, I then execute my trade through Thinkorswim, which is a platform that's owned by Charlie Schwab. It used to be owned by TD Ameritrade, but Charlie Schwab acquired it. There are so many other brokerages out there that you could use. I know a lot of people who, who use Robinhood. I particularly don't like Robinhood because sometimes it's slow to fill your orders. And, um, you know, I, ju I just don't think it's the best out there. Um, some people like Webull. I've heard a lot of good comments about Webull. They have a good mobile app. So if you're someone who wants to be trading on the phone, Webull could be something that you could look at. I also use Fidelity, but it's a little bit old and antiquated. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a few more others out there that you could use. So depending on um, your preference and what you like, I think there's so many options that you can look into. But for me personally, I think the best in class when it comes to trading is uh, Think or Swim, which is the platform that's owned by Charlie Schwab. Okay, this is awesome. Now, can you give us an example or walk us through an example of uh, how an options trade would look from like from uh, someone like me who has no idea what that even looks like? So, are you talking about when the, to enter and 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 how to enter what what exactly are you referring yeah to? so i'm i'm saying like so say i want to get involved in this and i'm saying okay i want to try this option so what would be like my first steps like even from execution from so say we're on the think or swim platform and i wanted to right. go and get into this would you recommend first of all that i would do the paper route or would you kind of recommend that i just do some Throw a little cash in there that I don't mind losing just in case things go south. What's your recommendation for people who want to just get started in this? So if you're seriously serious, right, where you say like, hey, I really want to go into this and I really want to make money. The first thing I would really encourage you to do is, you know, get a mentor, right? You have someone who can kind of like teach you. And the reason why I would recommend this is because it's going to accelerate your learning curve significantly. So there are so many people out there who have courses and programs so you can do your own due diligence in understanding which program aligns with you. If you're interested in maybe learning more about my program, um, we can talk about that later. But the first key step is, I think, having someone who can teach you and accelerate your learning curve is fundamental. YouTube University could also be an option. Uh, so that's the first thing. And then the second thing is, I think you need to define, you know, 
what type of trader are you? Are you someone who's who has the ability to day trade? So if if you know if your work schedule is flexible enough to to actually trade during the day, then you know potentially day trading could could be good for you. But if you have a nine to five, um, that maybe doesn't really give you the time and flexibility for you to enter the market during the, the time that the market is open. And the market is open, New York Stock Exchange is open 9.30 a.m. Uh, to 4 p.m. So if you're working during those hours, then maybe day trading might not be ideal for you. So <clears throat> there are three ways you could trade. You could be a day trader, you could do what are called sw swings, so you could be a swing trader, or you could take leaps. So let's start with leaps. Leaps is you basically entering a trade with like a very, very long term perspective, meaning that you're probably holding on to the trade for months and in some cases, even for a year, right? You can buy options contract that expire in 2026. Oh, wow. And you don't even look at them, right? You can set a, a sell price and then whenever that hits, it hits and you make money. There are people that I know that do that they they literally are buying contracts with more than 90 days expiration so right now they're looking at things in september and october and they literally just set it up and forget it so if they buy the contract let's say a thousand dollars they just set an automatic sell order when the contract gets to you know two thousand dollars and they also set a stop loss to say like hey if i lose 200 bucks kick me out so for them it's very low risk uh, you know, low friction, low engagement. They just look look at the charts from a long-term perspective. They enter their trade, they forget about it. And then one day they wake up, their order has gone through, it's sold, they've made money. So that's leaps. Swing trading is when you're holding the trade for more than a day, right? So you could enter a trade on Monday and just let it run and then maybe exit it on Thursday, Friday, or maybe even next week depending on the expiration date for the contract. So again, if you have a regular nine to five, that could be an option because maybe you could just look at the trade during lunch hour and, and, and figure out if you still wanna hold it or if you wanna close it out. So that's another way you could do it. But if you have the ability to then trade um, the way I trade, which is trade trading, my recommendation would be um, you really start by paper trading because options, uh, trading options, it, it, it requires you to kind of like feel the engine, right? You, you want to <laughs> feel what it's like to, 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 to trade. And for me, when I started, I, I, I spent two months just paper trading. So like using fake money on the Thinkorswim platform to just really understand, do I have my setups right? Because the key thing in order for you to be a good trader is you need to find your edge. And what I mean by that is you need to have, you know, one or two setups that you just look for in the marketplace. And I go back to the initial point about getting a mentor. That's why it's important in, in having a mentor who can teach you um, a, a couple of setups that you can then be really good at and then just leverage those in the marketplace. I know dozens of different setups that I can go deploy into the marketplace. But in reality, every single day, I only use one setup. And I like what Bruce Lee said when he said, I fear the man who has practiced the same kick 10,000 times rather than a man who has done, you know, 10,000 kicks once, right? So you could do, you know, 10,000 different kicks and you can practice them once, but the man who's just done one kick 10,000 times, when that kick lands, you're out. So for me, when I started, I was doing all of these different setups. You know, I, I was suffering from SOS, shiniest object syndrome. I'll go on YouTube and someone would say like, oh, do this breakout strategy. And that became the strategy I was, I was kind of like doing. And then another time they would say like, oh, do this nine EMA strategy. And I'm doing this nine EMA strategy for like a couple of days. And I was going through this roller coaster where it was kind of like ebbs and flows. I make money today, the next two, three days I lose money. And it was partly because 
I did not have an edge. It wasn't until I really just focused on one stock, which was NVIDIA, and one setup, when I started becoming consistently profitable. I'm talking about going from, I make $300 today, and then the next day I lose, you know, 200, and the next day maybe I lose 500, and then the next day maybe I make 400, right? It was never predictable. To consistently making $2,000 a day, every single day, trading one stock with wow. one setup. And I was part of this Discord community and I was sharing my results with the community every single day that they actually ended up calling me the NVIDIA King because literally for 90 days, I was literally trading NVIDIA with one setup and I became really, really good. And this was like in 2022, before NVIDIA became cool, I was like already wow. on it, uh, you know, trading my setups. So... <clears throat> If you're starting, I think that's the, the way to go is like learn one key setup, paper trade that setup so that like as soon as you see it forming like in the marketplace, like you're rubbing your hands and like, okay, come to mama, right? Come mm -hmm. to papa because you have your setup and then you go in and you execute. And then the, the other thing that I would tell anybody who's getting into this trading game is that you have one job and one job alone. You have to preserve your capital. And what that means is that you're gonna need to also manage your risk. So it's not about just going in and not thinking about what if the trade goes against me. When, I'm, when I enter any single trade, the first thing I tell myself is like, I could be wrong, right? So the, the first thing that I do is I manage my risk. I set a stop loss, so I put a trailing stop in place. So when I enter a trade, maybe the capital that I'm investing to enter that trade, maybe it's $500, but the actual money that I'm risking, maybe it's a hundred because I've set my stop loss where as long as, as, as soon as I lose a hundred dollars right. automatically kick me out. So I've preserved the other $400 so that I can go back and trade again. What I've seen with a lot of people who start trading options and then blow an account is because they do not manage risk. And that's part of the reason why paper trading is going to be key because then now you can really build that muscle memory of like, okay, I'm entering a trade. This is my setup. And oh, where should my stop loss be? And then you set up your stop loss. Because once you're now trading real money and the emotions start kicking in, if you haven't really built some of these good habits that will make you a good trader, you're going to lose your mind. And if anybody wants to find out how I know, just ask me how I know, right? Um, so, so, so I think as, as you're getting started, that would be it. Like, you know, find a platform where you can learn. Obviously I would be happy if, if, if I get to be a mentor, but there's so many other people out there, some who are even better than me, who can teach you how to trade and then find one setup that you can master and then paper trade until you feel like, okay, you're ready. And then go in and then uh and, and then go from there and then the other tip that i'll give you is even if you can afford to have a twenty thousand hundred thousand dollar account start small right mm -hmm. and and really just build your confidence even with a five hundred dollar account or a thousand dollar account and then once you've had a couple of wins in your bag then you can try to scale your account but if you just go in beginning with a very big account the temptation is real for you to 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 go big and if it's something that you don't really know how to handle things could get tricky um very like very fast so imagine you give a very new driver a ferrari to say like oh here's a ferrari you just got your license if they haven't really driven it before and and really felt what it's like to step on that accelerator and you know rave it up um things can get very dangerous pretty quickly so so that would be my other recommendation as well i love that advice that is some of the best advice i think i've ever heard and just like focus on one thing so how can we let's talk about your program like what is all involved in what you have to offer for someone like me who has no idea about this stuff but this was really insightful and do you teach this one kick strategy on in video on how you're doing this, making $2,000 a day. Do you teach that in your course program? Yeah, so so I teach that and more. So obviously my core setup 
is something that I teach, but I also teach other things as well, because I'm a firm believer that if you're coming into a program, you want to leave the program with a toolbox, right? Because sometimes the market presents scenarios that my like core setup won't really work, but another setup works. Mm -hmm. So the more you know, the better you are equipped into the marketplace. But also I understand that people are different. So some people might be better with uh, another strategy because of their risk profile and just who they are than the one that I use. So in, in my program, we, we kind of like do it in, in two steps. Okay. So we, 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 we have the side where we really just focus on the theory side, where you really just learn about what options trading is, the stock market and things like that. And then we get into the technical analysis. Obviously, most of the time is spent in the technical analysis. And um, it's a eight week program. And during those eight weeks, by the time you're done, um, you'd be ready to take your first trade and uh, hopefully start making money um, as, as you're trading. And for me, what's been very fulfilling is really seeing how people's lives have changed. Um, I'll give you a couple of examples. So yeah. um, there's a friend of mine uh, who's a nurse and she lost her job and she was like, hey, Kuda, I don't know what to do. My contract wasn't renewed and I've been applying to jobs and things haven't been just like going for me. And I'm like, well, do you want to learn how to trade? So she joined the program <laughs> and um, before the program even ended, she was making like $200 a day. And for her, it was wow. kind of like life changing because, you know, she was trading maybe an hour a day. And if you're making a like a $1,000 a week and you're making $4,000 a month, just off of an hour's time of effort, it could literally be time, like life changing, right? And um, what even got interesting with her story is that she actually ended up passing two evaluations for a funded account. So what a funded account is, is that these prop firms where you take an evaluation because they want to see if you're a good trader. And then if you pass the evaluation, they actually give you tens of thousands and sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars for you to trade. So you're basically trading their money oh. and you're, you're able to then keep 90% of the profits and they take 10%. So she passed two $50,000 accounts that she's now able to trade. So now all of a sudden she went from not having a job to learning how to trade, to now having $100,000 in capital from someone else because she was able to use what she learned in my program to pass this eval. And now with this funded account, you know, if she makes $1,000, $2,000 a day, she can essentially now create an income that could be very, very attractive. Um, there, are, there are a few more stories that, you know, I could share and most of them are on my landing page. But the cool thing about the program is that even if you have a nine to five or even if you're not um, working, I think trading as a skill is something that everybody should do. That's just my firm belief because it enables you to multiply money. Now, yeah. I'm going to use a biblical reference. All right. Uh, just to claim of this. But in the Bible, there's a parable of a master who left talents to his three servants. The first servant, he gave five talents. The second one, he gave two talents. And then the third one, he gave one. If you read the New Living Translation, which is the one that I read, it says that the first one who got five talents went and invested the five talents. The one who got two went to work. And then the third one dug it into the ground. Mm -hmm. And when the master came back from his trip, the one who had the five talents multiplied it and had five more, so it was now 10. The one who had two put the two to work and had four. And the one who dug it into the ground, it was just still there, it was one. So a lot of people, go to work, they make money from the work, which is the one talent you get, and maybe you put it in a savings account and you don't really do anything with it. And then it's just there. 
you're actually losing money because with inflation, the buying right. power, the purchasing power of that hundred dollars that you put in your in, in your savings account a year from now, it won't be able to afford the same stuff. If you're going to work, you're literally just trading your time for money. And we all know that time is limited. I have 24 hours in a day. Whitney, how many hours do you have in a day? 24. 24. So it's limited, right? No matter what you can do, you're not going to get an extra hour, right? So <clears throat> the only way you can actually change your life is by being able to figure out a way to have your money work for you, which yeah. is the investment piece. So you work your nine to five, you have a thousand dollars that you want to put in your savings account. Maybe don't put it in a savings account. Maybe learn how to trade. And then with the profits you make from the trading, maybe that's what you put into your savings account and just keep recycling the uh, $1,000 uh, that you have. Right. Um, <clears throat> do you have, can I share my screen? Am I able yeah. to share my screen? Yes. Okay. So go. here I'm sharing with you a trade that I took right um so i traded spx is the smp 500 okay i bought three contracts that were puts because i thought that it was gonna drop right you buy puts if you know that the price is gonna go down i entered that particular trade at 12 22. and you see over here i bought each contract at 750 dollars you always have to multiply this by 100. remember i told right. you one contract is 100. so 750 dollars per contract i bought three what's the difference in time whitney wow. between three minutes. when i sold and when i bought three minutes three minutes later it went from 750 dollars per contract to 1150 per contract. That's insane. It means that I made $1,200 in three minutes. You can even see the time here, 1228. I closed it out at 1225. Three minutes later, I took the screenshot. So I made $1,200 in three minutes. Now, this is where it becomes interesting and where it ties into the parable. It is the law of multiplication. Those three contracts that I had, I invested 2,200, right? I know everybody might not be able to take these types of trade, but it's the principle that I want you to, to leave with. Three minutes later, I had multiplied this 2,200 to $3,400. And I had made the $1,200, meaning that I had made 53% return on my money in three minutes. When I started working like full time after I graduated college, I was making 20 bucks an hour. It would have taken me 60 hours to make this 1200. But because I learned how to trade, I learned the skill and I mastered it. I now have the ability to go into the market and in three minutes make $1,200. I've had crazier days than that, that I won't even share right now, right? <laughs> but it just gives you the glimpse of what's possible. Have I lost money in certain trades? Yes. But remember, like I said, you manage your risk. I go into the trade knowing like, okay, I'm only willing to risk 300 bucks. So the most the market can do to hurt me is going to be $300, nothing more, right? And if I'm putting in a trade for 2,200 and I'm risking 300, but I actually then end up making 1200, the risk to reward ratio is in my favor because right. I was only risking 300. And when I took that risk, I then inevitably made 1200 and that's it. And you know what I did after? What? I closed my laptop <laughs> and went on with my day. <sighs> that's the beauty about trading, right? Because now I don't even need to be working like eight hours. I just wait for my setup. And in this, on this particular day, my setup was now perfect at 1222. So I set wow. an alert to say like, once it gets to this point, okay, alert yeah. me. So I'm just hanging You're out. You're literally, you know, you know it so well. You know, you're just waiting for that moment to arrive basically. 
Yeah. When, and so then when that moment happens. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. So you do your pre-market stuff before the market opens. You set your levels and then you just set an alert. And then all I just do is I just carry my phone. My phone vibrates to say like, Huda, it's showtime. And you know what? I open up and I see, I look for my setup. I wait for confirmation and then I enter. Now, <clears throat> let's say I was feeling frisky that day. And instead of buying three contracts, I bought six. It would have been the same setup, right? But it, the, the only thing is I'm just taking a little bit more risk, right? Mm -hmm. By buying six instead of three, meaning in those same three minutes, I would have made 2400 But let's say I was even feeling friskier and I bought nine, right? I would have made 3600 in the same three minutes with the same setup. Right. So when you talk about scalability, trading is probably the most scalable, you know, side hustle or endeavor, whatever you want to call it, that I know. And that's why you see like all these hedge funds, they're able to make a lot of money. Because what they've realized is that on the same setup where maybe someone can put, like in my case, 2200 a hedge fund is probably putting 200000 right? right? And it's the same setup, the same three minutes, but because they're going in 10 times more than me, they're obviously going to make 10 times more than me. So as you become good and you're compounding your profits and your account size actually starts to become bigger, guess what? Your profits can also potentially become bigger, right? right. And if you go back to the parable, five, two, and one, the reason the other one had five was because they had increased their ability by learning how to trade. So whoever then invests money and time and all the other things that you need to invest in order for you to learn the ability to multiply your money by trading, guess what will happen? Not only will you be able to make five more and multiply yours, but guess what? The one that dug the money into, into the ground, their money was taken away from them and given to them <laughs> one with five. <laughs> so, you know, that's the beauty about trading is that if you really go in and you lock in and you master it, you have the ability to have a totally different reality a year, two years, three years from now, um, if you're diligent and consistent. And I'll close with this, on this particular topic. There are two C's that will enable you to win in this game. Okay. Number one, commitment. If you don't commit, it'll be very difficult for you to, to start. Because a lot of people will be like, well, people told me that it's risky. People have lost a lot of money. Like, it's, it's all true. Like, I'm not saying, you know, trading is like the silver bullet. It's, it takes time. It, it takes mm. focus. It takes you really committing to the process. Right. But the other thing too, is that if you're consistent, you will then be able to go through the bad days or the things that you don't really understand that in the beginning actually sound like Greek, but over time, right. it will be beautiful English to you, right? Because now you understand and you've, you've put in the time, you're consistent in practicing. So if you're able to just show up and say like, hey, I'm committed to the process and I'm going to be co co consistent in learning how to trade, in doing my setup, in paper trading, and, and, and more importantly, be consistent with my risk management, I guarantee you that a few months down the road, you're going to be living a totally different life. And I'm not saying this so that you join my program, but I'm saying this because I believe that a lot of people um, are facing financial realities that they could solve if they could just learn a skill that yeah. enables them to multiply what they already have. Because the way I look at it, the money that you make at your nine to five is a seed. And it's now your job to take that seed, to multiply that seed using a different vehicle in order for you to reach the financial freedom that you want. To the process, yes. I was consistent. And then I found my one kick and my one stock that I, I, I started trading. And then now my, my life has changed and I'm now able to use that, um, 
you know, skill to not only just change my life, but to also change other people's lives right. through my options mastery bootcamp. I love this. I'm going to just end it right there. I, there's not much to say. This was amazing. And I honestly think like you have opened my eyes so much in this. And I'm just like, I have so much in my play with what I'm doing right now, but I'm like, this just to me makes so much sense to be doing, you know, multiplying what I already have. And in the way, and I love how you said it, you know, you're not just telling me just go to Thinker's Home and try it out. No, you gave the best advice. I need a mentor. I can't just go on this blindly and think I'm going to just try and do it on my own. I need someone to help me who has done the work, made the mistakes already that I could learn from. So I think that's just great advice not to just say, yeah, just go create an account and get out there. No, learn first before you just put yourself out there and you need some, a roadmap. So why go through it blindly if you don't have to? So I just, this was such a great interview. This was awesome. For anyone interested in his program, I want to put the information in the description below. If you guys have any comments or anything, let me know below. And I just think this was a great, like, uh, understanding first of it about what options are, how it works. And I love learning how to make money. And this was so motivating just to see, like, your results. Like, three minutes. I, that is what motivates me. I'm like, if I can do that and still be home with my kids and do something like this, this is just a great work from home opportunity and I'm all about making money from home so this is right up my alley about just promoting this different ways you can make money from home now like what before we go what type of person do you think is good with this and I think you already kind of said it's someone who can stay committed willing to learn willing to trust the process but I think people just want to know make sure like is this right for them are there any skills that someone has to have for this or is this just the will to learn it's it's a will to learn I've had this 75 year old grandma join my program how old 75 wow she's from texas she like watched one of my youtube videos and left a comment and i replied and i thought she was never gonna like email me and yeah. she emailed and we had a zoom call and i walked her through the program and she was like I i'm gonna try it cuta and she signed up for the program and now she's making a few hundred bucks a day trading Right. Wow. And now, if that's not that, a testament of anybody can do this. And I'm not yeah. saying you just because you're, but I'm like, that's amazing. And then to think she could have just had the mindset of like, oh, my kids should take care of me now. Uh, you know, I'm 75, I'm retired. Like, what, you know, she's like going into the market. She's like texting me to say, like, did you see Tesla today? I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, I so, love so it. I, 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 I honestly think if you just have the mindset, and I think the question you should ask yourself is, you know, what future reality do you want, right? Like, what's your why? If you're happy with kind of like your life today, then maybe this program is not for you because then, like I said, this is not plain sailing, right? You're going to need to learn. You're going to need to learn how to manage your emotions because when you actually are trading with the real money and let's say you're down a hundred bucks, you know, you could be thinking like, I could have bought groceries with a hundred bucks, right? Like, so there's yeah. a lot that goes into that and I'm, and I'll be very upfront, but when things then do go your way and you make $1,200, like that could be your entire groceries for like the entire month, right? That you just made in three minutes. Um, you know, so if, if, if you really want to change your life, if you're ready to, uh, open up your mind to something that can literally just take your financial reality to a whole nother level. I think it's for you. Um, I would really encourage you to come with the mindset of like, Hey, I'm going to invest money. I'm going to invest time. I'm going to learn because then when you come in with that mindset, this is not a get rich quick scheme. This is like, Hey, I'm going to teach you the skills that will enable you to be self-sufficient. Like I don't give signals or trades to my community. What I do is I teach you the skills that I have so that you can go do it on your own. Right. And if you're ready to then harness those skills and then be able to multiply your money, then you'll be successful in the program. I love it. Okay, this is awesome. Thank you so much. As always, Hello. guys, thanks for watching. Leave a comment below and subscribe for more. And definitely check out his YouTube videos too because he's awesome. All right, thanks guys for watching. Thanks, Buddha. <laughs>